Hi, Old Coop here, and in this series of videos, we're going to have a look at parent and child objects in Unity. As anyone that's used Unity for even a little while is probably aware, you can attach objects to other objects, making them parent and child objects. Uh, this has many different purposes, primarily to help us keep our hierarchy clean, to keep the scene tidy. Having an object as a child of another object enables you to hide them from view, just keeping things tidy and enabling you to manage your scene a little easier. There are also design and development benefits that sort of will become a bit more obvious as things become a little more intuitive for you, uh, but suffice to say that Generally, being able to contain one object within another is a fairly core idea to Unity and it's a fairly core concept of object-orientated programming. So being able to mimic that behavior in your game, in your scene, is generally quite helpful in a lot of different ways. Uh, and we'll cover some of that stuff, including things such as the world position and local position and how objects move around. Uh, we'll cover that sort of thing, some of the advanced stuff in later videos, but for now I'm just going to focus on some of the basic stuff, so how to get a list of child objects, how to store that, how to work with it, that sort of thing. I think the first thing we'll start with is just getting a list of the child objects, and hopefully this, this tutorial won't take too long overall, so stick around and we'll get started. Okay, first of all, we're going to work on a very simple way to go through the immediate children, that is, the first level of children of a game object. And if we have a look here, you'll notice I have a parent object. This is the largest cube in the scene. I have quite a few here. This is our parent cube. Underneath it, we have five child cubes. These are these five medium-sized cubes here. And underneath the one of the children, this child here, we have three sub-children. That is, children of the child object. Uh, that's these three smaller cubes here. So it's just sort of important to understand the uh, hierarchy of that particular object. Uh, and for the purposes of Unity, I suppose, you can now treat that as an individual object uh, and get properties from the children of it fairly easily. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at getting a list, and that list is just going to be generated when we click this click this button here to do the thing. Uh, I just have one single script here which I've attached to a game manager object. So when the button is clicked, it runs a function from that script on the game manager. If I bring up the script, you'll see there's uh, already some code in it. I'm not going to sit here and write it, I'll just talk you through it, it's very easy. So this is the function that it runs, list all children. We have a game object variable up here which I've dragged and dropped the parent cube into in the scene view and the uh, inspector. So when the function is run, all we do is we just say for each, and we run this loop, for each transform, which we'll call child, in the parent object, so the parent cubes, transform so each transform in the parents transform we just print out the name of that transforms game object so the child game object name so in theory when we run this we should just get a list of the first level of children underneath the parent object and if we run unity and it actually runs we click it and just quickly check the console we can see it there, and it perfectly mimics, or sorry, imitates, uh, well, it's it's an array, I guess, uh, so this is the order that it's going to go in, it's a, I guess, depth search, uh, it just goes in there based on the hierarchy, so we can see that here, child 1, 2, 3, 4, and the final one, child. You'll note we didn't get the sub-children. Okay, the last method was good, but what if we want to get the sub-children as well? It's quite straightforward. We basically just repeat the same method within the, same, within the original for each loop. So we do the first for each loop, which we did just before. We find the child in the transform component. We print out its name to the console. But then we do a second loop, and this happens on each child. We just do the same thing for each transform sub-child in the child's transform we just log the name of that subchild's game object to the console so if we check this where's unity here it is 
We should also get the sub children. There we go. Once again, it's exactly in line with the hierarchy. Now that we know how to get the child objects, let's make some changes to them. The first thing we'll do is, I have a few materials defined in the parent-child script. I have a red, a blue, and a green material that I've already assigned in the inspector here. We'll see those in the script in a second. Uh, let's say we want to change the parent object to green, we'll change the children to red, I think it is, and we'll change the sub-children to blue. Uh, so yeah, it should be green, red, blue, and that's going to happen when we click the button just as before, and the way we'll do that in the script, and it's going to be quite simple, we're using the same method again. If we have a look, uh, there's the material variables if you're interested. I'll just shrink those out of the road. If we go to the list all children method, when it runs, we simply get the, com the mesh renderer component of the main parent object. Whoops, and I should probably put that in there parent dot get component so we access the parents game object we do a get component of its mesh renderer we update the material and we change it to the green material we then have the first for each loop which is doing the same thing it's getting each child in the transform we print its name out and we say that it that it is now red so each child will be red and it will tell us this in the console and we do the same thing we say child dot get component uh, whoops I don't know if that will work. Actually, it'll be child.gameObject.getComponent. component. It might work anyway, but that makes me feel better. And I'm just going to do the same down here. So we go to the child.gameObject.getComponent. component. We get its mesh renderer and update its material to red. We do that for each child. And then within each child, within the original loop, we do a second loop. We get the subchild in the child's transform, uh, and we do the same thing. We print out to the console its name, and we say that it is now blue. And we get its mesh renderer using get component, and we update its material to blue. So that should achieve the desired result. We should have a green parent, red children, and blue sub children when we click the button anyway and we should have a nice console log to tell us all that too. There we go. Looks horrible, but you get the idea. So we should be in a good position now. We know how to get a list of child objects, the subchildren and the parent. We know how to update them and how to get the components and change things as we need to. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed and are probably thinking to yourselves, Coop, you're using a lot of get components there. Isn't that going to be a problem? And to you, person that I just made up, I'm going to say don't stress. Unless you're doing this on thousands of objects simultaneously, you probably won't notice a huge impact. That said, there are probably still better ways to do this, or at least ways that will make our job a little bit easier. So I'm going to show you how to achieve virtually the same thing using just a single function instead no to none of those for each loops or at least not at this point uh, we're just going to do things a lot more simply and same as before we're just going to access the mesh renderer and we're going to update the materials of these objects so I'll get the script up again and this time you'll see it's a bit different we have the same list all children function that runs when we click the button this time though we create a temporary array of mesh renderers which we are going to call all mesh rends you can see that there and it's going to be equal to the parent game object dot get components in children and this function here is similar to get component we just give it the mesh render of the component that we want and instead of it just giving us an individual component it gives us every one of these components on each of the child objects the sub child objects and importantly the parent itself so this function is going to give you everything it's going to give you the parent the children and the sub children as well as opposed to the earlier methods now that's all pretty good that's one single line uh, it's also cool to note that there's also a get components in parent function so if you were running this from one of the children you could also do the same but in reverse using get components in parent instead uh, just a cool little thing but now that we've got that array, we'll run a simple one for each loop here. We're just going to go through that array and we're going to say for every mesh renderer in it, which we are calling rend each time this loop runs, 
So for every mesh renderer called rend in all mesh rends, which is the array we created at the top here, we are doing similar to before. We're just going to log to the console the game object's name, the child's name, sorry, the the renderer the renderers dot game object name, uh, and we're going to say that it was changed to green, and then we just simply update the renderers material to green. Really easy. If I bring Unity up. I think you should know what to expect by now. Uh, we can see the console here. I'm just going to run it, and everything changes to green. And the main reason I wanted to show you is just once again, really to hammer home that point that the get components in children function grabs everything. So you have the parent. It's so basically the object it was run on, its children and all its subchildren, and it gets all the mesh renderers of them. So once again, I'm not sure how efficient that is compared to the earlier methods, but I do know that it's a lot easier to code. It just makes your life a bit easier. You don't need those two loops and worrying about duplicating things. Uh, it's just an easier way to get those components of children. Most times, I'm guessing if you're accessing the children in this fashion, you're probably going to be getting some component or another. So this function will generally come in handy quite often. And now that we've seen get components in children, we've probably also noticed that it does get everything. So we'll probably want to split that up and do certain things based on the objects as we did before. Uh, we'll sort of mimic that again. We'll have the, what is it? The parent object is green. We'll have these as red, the children, and we'll have the subchildren as blue. And it's quite easy to do. So I'm making use of tags. The parent object has been tagged as parent. The children have been tagged as child and the subchild as sub child so nice and easy and if we have a bit of a look at the script come in here uh, same as before the list all children function the, we're creating that array like we did last time calling it all mesh rends uh, it's equal to the parent dot get components in children we're getting the mesh renderer of each child uh, once again it does include the parent and all sub children uh, and we're doing a for each loop and we're saying that for each mesh renderer within all mesh rends call it rend uh, and then we do a switch. We just say that if the rend dot game objects tag is equal to say parent, we update it to green and we log to the console that we did. We do the same for child and we do the same for sub child. So it's a really, really easy way to break that sort of to break the array up and to decide which objects you do want and don't want to update. Uh, and I'll just quickly show you that one running. Once again, we should have a nice little uh, list here in the console saying what was done and in which order it was done if we click the button There we go. We get green red blue and we have it sort of here in the console And we can do a couple of extra things with it if we wanted to uh, just as an example So the point here is that we're getting the mesh renderer. We could get sort of anything any of the components uh, We can also do the same all these like using a switch or using any if conditions and whatever within these for each loops is entirely possible. You could do it with the transform uh, method instead. You can sort of utilize both these to, to achieve the results that you want. Uh, as an example, you might say you don't want to update the parent object, you want to ignore it. You could easily just say that if the rend.gameobject.tag does not equal parent, so only do this if it doesn't equal parent, and um, we could just chuck that entire switch within there. And we can probably get rid of this as well because that's never going to be the case in that switch. And same as before, if we run it, this time the only real difference is it's just going to ignore the parent object itself. Hopefully everything else should just work as normal. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, it's just one example. You can access any property of the objects that you like. You can access any of the properties of, of the component uh, using sort of the different properties that you can access. You can change what you need to do. So, hopefully all this should give you guys some cool stuff to work with. Uh, have some fun with it. Let me know if you get stuck. Drop us a comment if there's any problems. Uh, please like and subscribe as always and uh, stick around for some later videos which, like I said before, are going to cover some more advanced stuff including the much-hated world and local position and sort of how to utilize those. So yeah, stick around and I'll try and get those those out as soon as possible. Thanks guys and uh, oh, I should probably also mention uh, I do have my Patreon now and it is uh, I do have a few supporters on there. I just wanted to say thanks guys. I really do appreciate it and uh, keep up the hard work. You guys are awesome and I do a 
this stuff for you. Uh, enjoy, and I'll talk to you next time.